Okay, so let's spend a couple minutes on patient reception and ergonomics. We're kind of um, going back now to the big, okay, the um, major muscle groups instead of the fine motor skills, the big motor skills. And we're going to go through this pretty quickly here. So the book talks about the physical arrangements and interpersonal relationships of um, the office and what is ideal. And is it an open bay system? Is it, uh, do you have rooms uh, to work in? Do you uh, need to modulate your voice? That type of thing. So the feel of the office can uh, really start in the parking lot for the patients. What is what does the parking lot look like? Are the grounds kept? Uh, is the office uh, kept up to date? Is it clean? Is it uh, painted? Is it in good repair? So we want all of this to give a good first impression. And we are evaluating the patient for their well-being. We want to reduce their stress and fatigue as well as uh, we want a good working environment, not only uh, for ourselves, but we want to be proud of where we're working. And there are some things that are common in all areas of no matter what office you're in. And one of them is the... Um, the treatment area and then the patient reception. So you go out to the reception room and you open the door and depending on the philosophy of your office, you will call your patient back. I was in a perio office and I was a young hygienist. Everybody was Mr. or Mrs. until they told me to call them otherwise. And I still pretty much do that because I still feel like I'm 12 years old inside. So uh, I, I give them the respect. Oh, call me Susie or, or whatever, but Mrs. Jones. Hi, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Susie. I will be the hygienist working with you today. Come on back, you know, or, or whatever. All right, but you introduce yourself, you call the patient by their proper name. Some offices, everybody's on the first name basis, even with the doctor. So you want to take your cue with that. And then you escort the patient to the dental chair. You're not saying go, go on down and it's to the right. We're in room number one. You are escorting the patient. They are your guest. You want the position of the chair, okay, to greet the patient. You want it sitting upright. I'm sorry, Miss D. Um, what chapter are you talking about? Then? I'm sorry. Um, Is that chapter eight. seven? Eight. Or? Oh, just eight. Oh, oh, I thought gotcha. you. Okay, thank you. Do you want the chair to be? Uh, be able to receive the patient. If Mr. Jones is six feet, uh, 12 inches or 10 inches tall, then you can't have the chair all the way down to the floor. You want to raise the base up so they can get in and out of it uh, comfortably. So they're usually upright or semi-upright, okay? Uh, supine is with the nose and the knees, okay? And then the Trillendenberg is with the head lower than the, um, than the knees. So you want the chair to be able to um, receive the patient. So sometimes you're making adjustments in the base. At the conclusion of the appointment, you're going to bring the chair up. Again, you are going to be raising or lowering that base depending on how tall the patient is and what their mobility is. The older people might not be able to hoist themselves out of the chair comfortably. So if you keep the base just a little bit higher, they don't have to use their leg muscles just as uh, quite as much. Um, so you want to raise the base of the chair if you need to, but raise the patient so they're seat in a seated upright position and leave it there for a couple minutes while you're concluding the appointment. And why would that be important? It would be important to, uh, if I was um, experiencing any type of hypotension because I've been laying on my back, 
and you sit me up real fast, if I try to get up real fast, my blood pressure doesn't have an opportunity to equalize. So if I was on blood pressure medication or if I had any type of um, dizziness uh, situation going on, I'd raise the chair slowly and I would let the patient sit for a minute before they attempted getting up. Neutral working position, we've talked about, and it's appropriate to perform services conveniently as well as efficiently. The patient's only there for a short time compared to us doing it day after day after day, hour after hour. So when at all possible, have the patient move for you to allow you to do better work instead of you moving for the patient. So the clinician's position is assumed longer than the patient's position because you're doing it all day. Neutral working position, we've talked about. 15 to 22 inches, this is what gets measured here when you get measured for loops. What is your working distance? 15 to 22 is the norm, but that can change. How tall is your torso? Are you long-legged? Are you short-legged? That type of thing. So when you get measured for loops, they will measure you from here to here to see what that focal distance is. The treatment area includes the clinician's chair or stool or saddle. You need good lighting. We talked about uh, magnification. We're gonna talk about it a little bit more on Friday. Hand pieces should be light. Cords should not be dragging and pulling you down. So all the, the whole operatory should be set up to pr protect you, the clinician. The light for maxillary light is angled up versus mandibular arch, okay? With the headlamp on with your loops, a lot of clinicians aren't even using the headlight. Now, I didn't start uh, using my, my headlight on my loops uh, until recently compared to all the years I was a hygienist. So I'm just in the habit of flipping the switch on and, and putting the the light where I need it, whether I need it or not. Now we talked about this, this is overlapping what we talked about with Gehrig last week. Occupational problems. You want to be able to stretch and do movements to protect yourself. You, excuse me, you don't want to um, be in a static position for very long. This is showing you this ligament here, which can tighten up and this median nerve here can actually go to sleep, okay, and create carpal tunnel. You, you are starting the patient out with a uh, medical history. What you're looking for also is a potential emergency. Are you making appointments in the morning? Are you making appointments in the afternoon? Have they eaten? Are they diabetic? What was their blood sugar? Have they eaten? Did they take their insulin? If they took their insulin, they better have eaten. Can they tolerate longer appointments or shorter appointments? So again, the position of us is going to safeguard us for the career that we have chosen. So we want you to get into good habits soon, not get bad habits, because bad habits are hard to break. So we will be on you, we will be on you. So it's important that the patient know, we need to lay you back. And they're going to feel like they're falling on their head. And so you make a little adjustment for them and, and they're saying, you know, is, is this okay? And hopefully they'll say yes. So you could work effectively and safely. And that was chapter eight. So, our right, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to quit. What questions do we have? I need to ask if I'm allowed to change um, the date Well, no, I can change the date. I just can't change. Okay. I'm talking about the, um, the test. Let me, 
I got some thinking to do on trying to rearrange some stuff, but I'll see if we can move the test for uh, Tuesday to the following week. Also, before we go, I have a quick question. Um, is it possible we can just, um, while we have a little bit of time to go through the syllabus, just so that we can get our heads straight for which chapters are going with which weeks and like, cause some of the chapter names are not corresponding correctly and it's different from Canvas also. I think that will help us to figure out like exactly what we need. Well, to um, yeah, what I have to do though is go through it first and that's what I haven't had time to do. Okay. Ms. So Steve? for now, in Navigate, in Navigate, which chapters are we supposed to be doing for prep tests? Are we supposed to be doing eight, five, seven, and 13? Five, seven, yes. So all of yeah. those, eight, five, seven, yes. and okay. Mm -hmm. I've got Mrs. five, exactly six, weeks. and 13. I only have three of them. Where are you coming up with? Eight was last week. Misty, I think we're confused just because we went over eight, but you were just reviewing that for the exam, right? Just now? Yes. Okay, that's what I think was throwing us all off a little bit. Okay, oh. so we only have to do five, seven, and 13 on Navigate. Yes. Okay. You just said that. The eight on navigates on last week. I didn't see that on last week. Yeah, last week we just did 10, 11, 10, 11 12. 12. We did eight was meant to be read for the first week, I think. And we ended up not taking the quiz on it because there was all the confusion between the yeah. quiz and the navigate. Yeah, eight was supposed to be for week one. And you didn't have to do it because after the uh, quiz oh, on week right. one, it's. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So just yeah. now you said just now you said five, six and thirteen, but it's five, seven and thirteen, right? Yes. Just okay. five, seven, and thirteen. Just okay. that's for navigate, for, right? For five, navigate. seven. Mm -hmm. And there are so, actually yeah, the, the first week. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, the first week I thought that uh, Navigate was doing the quizzes for everything, and I realized that it wasn't. So I only had you do um quit the quiz on week one. Then for week two, um, you could do the first week. It's going to be okay, guys, you know, because everything's a mess. So if uh, I would recommend, though, doing some navigate quizzes on every single chapter that you're responsible for, whether I've listed it or not, because that is your training ground. That gets you used to the style of questions and that how, as you look up the questions. Are your tests um, the same style of questions as what's yeah. on Navigate? Yes. Okay, I figured, yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, I had a question about the Garrett book, Misty. I don't know how, like, I, I've read the chapters, but I don't know how are the questions going to be like, are they going to be pictures and I have to answer them through looking at them, or are they going to be just like as any other exam questions? Um, a little bit of everything. So for uh, the pictures, for example, might be on where is your, where are you seated in, if you're working on this area of the mouth? What okay. clock position? Okay. Will uh, a question like that be dependent upon whether we are right-handed or left-handed or for, you'll, you'll say if you're right-handed, it will say for the right-handed and it'll say for the left-handed. I got you, okay. So the other question is um, under assignments, we have two week three assignments, um, uh, but week three assignment is just the screenshots. So do we need to submit them twice or is there like a duplicate here? I don't understand what you're saying. If you go under assignments, um, there are two different places to submit week three assignments. Both do the 15th, both do at 9 a.m. Well, let me check that, okay, because you should only have to submit it once. Yeah, the one that I just asked her earlier that we have to submit one day, September 15th. You know what? It's like that for every chapter, so I wonder if it's some sort of, um, like... Oh, you I probably did something. Okay, let me look at that. I probably did something stupid. 
So you should only have to uh, submit something once. Okay, so we just choose one of the two links and, and, and upload to that one? Yeah, why don't you wait for a little bit and let me figure out what the heck I did. Okay. okay what, what link are you talking about? Because I only have, see one. It's under assignments, navigate. We, okay. I use the word link, but essentially you click on it and it says yeah. submit assignment right. and then you put your um, screenshots of your navigate quizzes on that. But there's two separate ones under assignments. Oh. Yeah, but I, I think that. if you go under module, there's only one. Yeah, yeah exactly. you, sh you shouldn't be going under assignments. You should be going into modules. Yeah, so when you go onto the, onto the uh, class, go on the home, it'll show you everything. If you scroll down, you'll see module three as the header for the tab. And mm -hmm. then you'll see navigate to week three. You click on that, and that's where you submit your screenshots. Under module three, you said? Yes, yeah, so you'll see module yeah. three, navigate to, yeah, that's where you will submit it. Okay, so I don't even need to be looking at the assignments tab then. No, no don't look no. at the assignments tab. I can't figure out how to, to share, but yeah, so I'm on um, module three, okay, it says week three, and then week three PowerPoints, navigate to week three. And then uh, that's where uh, you click, and it will be where you upload. Under the module. Okay, I see that now. Yeah, so you don't, you shouldn't be going into assignments. You should be doing everything by the module. Okay. I see that, thanks. Um, are we uploading the same chapters for week three and week four? Um, no, you can take a week off if you've uploaded all of them. I, if they're, if it is the same chapters, I will um, say week four, you don't have to upload anything. How's that? I think chapters, okay, so chapter six, we don't have to even do it for chapter week four, right? You, sh you guys are confusing me. You should do chapter six, yeah. So maybe chapter six will be the only week four because week seven is week three. What? I'm so lost. Okay, so we do five, seven, and 13 for week three and chapter six for week four. Okay, I like that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so actually, okay, it says week four in the schedule that I printed and so complete corresponding chapters and navigate I wrote 5 7 13 but that's for week 4 5 um, 7 and 13 will be week 3 and chapter 6 will be week 4 chapter 6 so um, that means the ones that are due next Tuesday a week from today will be 5 7 and 13 those are due a week from today, in two weeks from today is chapter six that will be due. Am I saying that Five, correctly? Five, seven, and 13 yeah. should be due by the, uh, by the 15th. Okay. Then chapter six should be due by the 22nd. Okay, so chapter six, and that's the only navigate. Oh, 22nd, I'm chapter six. It says the due date for week four is also September 15th. Yes. Are you going to be fixing that? Let me see what I've done. Um, Okay, so what am I supposed to be looking at now? The due date for week three and week four, they're both on September 15th. Mm-hmm. Um, are you going to be fixing the week four due date? The week four due date would be September 22nd, mm -hmm. but that would be week five. Mm -hmm.
So I've got something due September, uh, let's see, September 8th, which was um, today. Yeah. Ten, for yeah. week two. Okay, we are on week three. So the so next week will be the 15th. Then week four should be the 22nd. And we didn't um, get lectured today for seven for um, seven thirteen. So that's just all our, on our own, and have the quizzes due by next Tuesday. Uh, chapter thirteen, we you got uh, chapter thirteen was presented to you. Okay. Seven. Chapter thirteen was presented to you. Right. It was five right. and seven. You mean five and seven that we yeah five and seven we didn't go over today. Correct. Miss D, I think what happened for the um, due dates on the Navigates, I think starting week um, four or five, you all of them are like a week off. Like they need okay. to be pushed out, yeah. <laughs> okay, week. all right. So let me let me go through and just see what I've done. Uh, this um, this this is not easy. <laughs> for me trying and trying to multitask is is even worse so let let me just sit down with my calendar and see what i've done thank you mrs d i know this is crazy well it's crazy for and i, I apologize for the frustration frustration you all have to go through but um yeah we'll get it all straightened out guys nobody's going to get penalized if, if we screw up it's all okay nobody's going to die <laughs> thank you um so let me just really quickly ask for Monday. We should have um, we should have obviously our skill eval sheets, which we should have already done, and then the lymph node sheets we should print um, because we're going to be working on that in clinical. And the the sheets for the descriptives you mentioned. Yes, and the um, also uh the patient operator anything for patient operator positioning there are lots of cheat sheets that were in uh in canvas if you want to print out any of those okay okay and then you mentioned look up videos on skills that's something i have not been able to find yet is that pretty simple Vide Just videos is on navigate oh that's why i was looking through okay all right and so also there's some videos on canvas if you look under clinic help Okay, I did, but maybe I just, I'll just look again, and that's under clinic help. There's blood pressure, vitals, there, there's other. Oh, other I saw videos. those, right, okay. I thought there were other ones. I'll just look again. I think there was so much that made me overwhelmed. I may not be. Listen, everybody's overwhelmed. I right. am too. <laughs> yeah, okay. And then, Ms. D, for clinic, did you say bring the Garrick, but we don't need to bring our Wilkins? Is that correct? Yeah, you don't need to bring the Wilkins. Okay. That's too too big to carry around. There is a Wilkins in clinic for reference, but the Garrick is something that you'll be using chairside while you're should practicing. We be, should we be bringing uh, instruments for next week, like the instruments that we've been given? Yes. Okay. Because I really don't know what we're going to be doing. Just bring the whole box. <laughs> I don't, it'll be uh, through your probe, you know, <laughs> mirror, mirror and probe. Okay. Let's see, me and Jody got a text that our name tags were in. Yay. Well, that's something. Right. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you for your patience, everybody. I, um, I will communicate with you as I'm figuring out what the heck I'm doing. How's that? And don't be afraid to email me. I've got uh, thin skin, but I'm used to getting beaten up. So <laughs> I grew up with four brothers. Uh, so anyway, I'll survive. So let me know if I'm not communicating things effectively. And, uh, you know, like Michaela, I thought I had straightened something out and I get, I guess that was at the bottom of my list as far as week three and stuff because I still have I found my sticky note 
for it. I'm going to be discussing with Heen about uh, having her get together with you all for um, a review, I guess, uh, for the Wilkins, or would you prefer the um, oral anatomy? Wilkins. Oh, I think if I had to choose, it would be Wilkins. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'm going to talk to her at three o'clock and we'll come up with something that she can... Um, she can have you sign up for. Friday, I will also let you know about timing for the, um, for the webinar. Uh, I might not be able to change it. So for now, it's from 12 to 1.30. If you can attend, it's great. If you can't, I perfectly understand. Um, and there's a lot of good information that you'll be having. So um, I hope that you will be able to attend if you're available. If it's at 1.30 and I have to leave by 1, would that be okay? You just sneak out. I just sneak out, okay. <laughs> yep, that's, I mean, we do what we can. Okay, so let's call it a day. All right, thank you, Mrs. D. All right, guys, talk to you soon. Ms. D, can I ask a question about uh, the lab jacket? Yes. So, just for my own clarification, you said that when we're on campus, but not in clinic, we have to wear our warm up jackets over our scrubs, correct? If you're in clinic, you should. Okay, but like if we're in the hallway? You can just wear your scrubs. Okay. And then so like from the locker room to clinic, we should wear our white jacket and then put on our den line in oh yeah you're supposed to but guess what it's it's six feet don't just okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't need to be bringing both of our jackets into clinic to change into the other one no you could take your your uh blue jacket off fold it inside out and then go into the locker room like that okay thank you okay any other questions Okay, well, I will be seeing you, uh, you all at some point tomorrow because I will be on campus with local anesthesia. Thank you, Mrs. D. Bye. Bye. Oh, Miss D, if you're still there? Yeah. So uh, how late uh, are you at the uh, clinic tomorrow? I think two. And two, two. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay.